This Zoom replay video was originally streamed Spring 2020. To learn more about upcoming online and in-person events, please visit our website at menla.org. May 1st is uh, nothing to do with Taoism, but the 1st of May, I do feel I have to honor as an Irish woman, the day that the divine masculine of the sun connects with the earth to bring her full beauty to plant the earth. So in Ireland, we'd say the sun husbands himself to the earth. So it's the a beautiful, it, I mean, it is connected with Taoism in the sense that it's yin and yang merging together to bring forth the abundance of the earth. So thank you for, for showing up tonight. And uh, I'd like to begin with a mantra and a little um, mudra movement and then I'll, I'll, go, I'll dive into talking about qigong and give you a demonstration and then we'll have a chance to talk and have questions. So uh, in qigong the, the, the mudra that in yoga is called chin mudra with the index fingers and thumbs together connects us to on the right hand stability and the power of the universe. And on the left, the left hand is um, uh, our intelligence and progress. So we, when we merge these two together and draw figure eights as we chant the mantra, Om Mani Padme Hom, this will, it helps us to heal our DNA. So take a moment to Breathe in a nice full breath. And a moment for an intention for your own healing for yourself today. Saliva is an important part of Taoist medicine. So roll the tongue around the, the gums. And when you have some saliva, swallow as if it were a waterfall inside the body and send it to wherever you need healing today. Now please make that mudra and from your pelvis up through the heart and up to the head. Om Mane Padme Hum 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 Now, please, if you would bring your hands to the breastbone point, right in the very center of the breastbone. That point is called Tang Zhan in Chinese medicine. And it's the place that nourishes the blood. We say in Taoism that on the moment that we took our first breath in, on the day we were born, the, all the power of the universe connects with the blood of the heart at that moment. So take this moment now to remember yourself as one minute old, taking in your first breaths and looking at the noble heart of your birth. feeling that spirit of your child self. 
Now, please rub the hands vigorously. And for, you know, a few, quite a few seconds. And then bring the hands about four or five inches apart. And as you inhale, bring them a little wider and exhale, bring them in almost touching, but not quite. Inhale, exhale. And you should feel there when the hands are close to each other, especially, that there's a little electrical field between your hands. So that's the chi. That's the life force. That's the connection between the breath and the blood and us and the sky. So the more we practice with Qigong, doing the movements of Qigong, the, more, the stronger that vibration will get. I'm gonna to talk to you, as we have such a short time, I'm gonna to try to get in as much as possible for you. You can pause for a few moments, you can keep feeling that energy. Um, so the, one of the, the most important thing to know about Qigong is that we, we, are, we are born with two types of qi, the prenatal qi and postnatal qi. So the prenatal qi is stored in our kidneys and that remains undeveloped unless it is cultivated. So Qigong is how we cultivate it. What we say in Qigong is we, we connect to the infinite power of the universe through Qigong when we, when we practice Qigong and we nourish that prenatal qi. In other words, the energy that we came into the world with from our parents, but also from the universe and everything in heaven and earth. Uh, the second chi is postnatal chi, which is this life. Um, so if we don't protect our prenatal chi with our postnatal chi, the prenatal chi will be damaged. It needs to be protected and nourished. We can increase our postnatal chi, the chi of this life that we're in now. And as well as practicing Qigong and spiritual practice, eating well, drinking good, good water, not shocking the system, eating before we're too hungry, not letting ourselves get too cold, uh, too hot. Taoism is very much about um, moderation and uh, my teachers would be very much not for climbing Mount Everest or, you know, something that would really, really tax the body uh, because that would drain the, the prenatal chi. So it would also use too much of our uh, postnatal chi to, to take on something like that. But some people have the capacity to do these things without damaging their chi too much. But generally, we don't. So we need to have this moderation in life. The Taoists see the, the physical body in three. So we have chakras and the same as yoga and other mythologies. Uh, but the three parts of the body that are most important are the pelvis is the lower dantian, the heart and lungs is the middle dantian, that's D-A-N-T-I-E-N, two words, and the head, third eye, and the crown is the upper dantian. So the lower dantian is below the navel, and that's where we store the postnatal chi. It also distributes it. So it's like a cauldron that sends the chi like steam up into the rest of the organs. So it sort of has a 
the steam is like a, uh, a nurturing aspect. It protects the prenatal chi, the chi in the pelvis. And the related organs are the kidneys and the color is red. The middle dantian, where the tangzhong point is that we started with, uh, is the lungs and the heart, as you can imagine. Um, this also stores postnatal chi, so the chi of our present life. It distributes it, and that's through the hands as well as the rest of the body. The middle dantian controls our emotions. And if you're a Buddhist, this is an important aspect of, especially concerning um, re releasing ourselves from suffering. So the middle dantian, and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Uh, this also stores the postnatal chi, connects to the blood and the other organ chi, and the color is considered green. So um, the upper dantian between the eyebrows, mental activity, consciousness, spirit, connection to the Tao or Dharma, intuition, the cosmos, connection with spirit, so spirit guides. Um, it also is related to the heart because uh, if you're, if you're a, a Buddhist, you know the sense of bringing the heart into the, uh, bringing the mind into the heart. So it's, the heart is also related to the upper dantian. And then the marrow of the brain, the color is blue, connecting to the sky. So to the, em the sense of emptiness in the blue sky. The hands are extremely important, as you can imagine in with, as we, we would compare to Buddhist practice, the importance of mudras. Um, each finger has its own energy. The ring finger is the, the triple heater, which is uh, the energy of the torso. Um, the lungs and the heart. Um, the middle finger relates to the stomach and spleen. Um, uh, the middle finger is the protector of the heart, which is also known as the circulation sex, the pericardium. Index finger is the large intestine. The thumb is the lungs. So when we're practicing mudras and movements, we're connecting through the, through the hands and the arms to all the lines of energy, the meridians that are connected to our organs. So the movement with the hands, and even if you have lost a finger, I have a friend who has lost some of his digits, you still have the energy of the parts of the body that are missing, which is a nice uh, notion in, from Qigong. Um, again, as, and then the, the spiritual astro, attributes of the, of the fingers, uh, the right thumb is intelligence, the index finger is power force, the middle finger is happiness, the ring finger is the way you work in your life, your method of working, the, your little pinky finger is wisdom. On the left hand, the thumb is stability and the index finger is progress, how we progress in the world. Tolerance is the middle finger and the ring finger is self-discipline. So whatever your discipline, your practice is, your meditation, yoga, uh, qigong, and the pinky finger is generosity. So when we bring the hands together, those opposite emotions, they're not opposites, but they're complementary. Um, the prayer, it's like they're speaking to each other through both halves of the brain and the body through the hands. So the hands are extremely powerful. You probably already know that if you know anything about mudras. Um, and then on the sole of the foot, so there's two other points. Uh, that I want to talk about the center of the hand, the, 
is called the Lao Gong point. And that's a connection to the heart as well, particularly on the left hand. So the left hand is considered close to the heart, as it were. And then on the sole of the foot, uh, if you think of this as my big toe, second toe, right about here on the sole of the foot, the middle, upper middle part of the foot, is a point um, called Yang Xuan. Um, and that's the only meridian point that connects to the earth. So it's related to the kidneys. So that prenatal chi that we talked about, the precious, precious chi of the beginning of our life from the time we were conceived, connects to the kidneys and then it connects to the earth. So we, we come in from the stars, the Taoists say. We come in from the stars. We manifest in these bodies, we incarnate in these bodies, and then we put our feet on the earth so the earth can bring heaven and earth together through us with the movements of the hands. So that, I mean, that's the most very basic way I could describe. There's all the organs have their own emotions. Uh, the liver is to help us um, transmute anger. The lungs are to help us transform our grief. Every human has grief, but it's to allow us to let grief be part of our lives and not rule our lives. The heart is to have a balanced cauldron holding container for, the, for love. Um, the kidneys are to help us transform fear into fearlessness. And the stomach and spleen are to help us relieve worry. Uh, so there are mudras and sounds that go with all the organs. We can't go into all of those now because they're, it's quite a complex um, form and there's a lot to it. But, that, but those are the basic things to remember about the organs. Um, to have balance of our emotions, the, the seven toxic emotions, my, my teachers call them. So, um, and the saliva is related to the kidney chi. So when you swallow, think of that kidney chi as helping support your, um, the saliva helping nourish your kidney chi. So we're going to do a little practice now. For those of you who would like to, to do this with me, I'm going to move my chair. I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to do a small form with you called cloud hands. So this is where we connect to the spirit of the clouds and the water as it relates to the kidneys. And there's a little seed mantra in there for healing the heart. So any healing that you need for your heart today, uh, put that intention into the practice. Okay, so we'll stand up. Let me shift my screen there. Okay, so first just give your shoulders a little shake out, shake out the pelvis, a lot of Wiggling and shaking happens in Qigong. <sighs> Shake out the shoulders and a quick throw your worries off your shoulders. This is from self, self massage practice. Shake the hands up. Generally, I would do that for at least a good five minutes, but we don't have time to do all the body movements for that. So for the cloud hands, bring the hands to prayer at that breastbone point, please. Take a nice breath there, like the first breath of life, remembering that that moment when we breathed into the world on the day of our birth, we came in with all the intelligence of the universe. So put your prayer for your own magnificence into your heart. It's 
swallow when you're ready. Good medicine in the saliva. And then raise the hands up to the sky. Inhale into the clouds. Now I'm going to my left in a side bend. Please go to your left, exhale. And slowly inhale. And exhale to the right. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. This is to make the clouds. One more to each side. Inhale. Exhale. Keep a little smile on the lips. Inhale. Exhale. Up to the top with your prayer hands. Inhale. Exhale, pour in, wiggle the fingers, sparkle in the heaven chi with the cloud chi into your crown chakra, which is called the byway in Qigong. Inhale, open and hold all the medicine of the water in your hands, the stars in the water. And then pour, the, pour, the hands turn over, pour into your roots, the medicine of the water. Now we make a bird's beak mudra. So that's with all the fingers together, like you're taking a pinch of salt. And that mudra goes to the right kidney. And now my left hand is coming across the body. The palm is open, facing forward. Inhale, exhale. And this is pushing the clouds. And now my left hand is going into that bird's beak mudra. And my right hand opens up like a bird's wing. Inhale, exhale. So really think of your arms like bird wings, moving the cloud chi. Inhale, exhale. And healing your kidneys as your hands come back to each kidney. Inhale, Exhale, keep that smile on the lips, tiny smile, like a little baby. Swallowing the saliva, pushing the clouds. Last one goes to the right. Inhale, exhale. And now see how slowly you can move as if you were seaweed under the water. We're gonna come back and gather, make a gathering gesture to bring the water up to the stars. Inhale up and then make prayer hands and exhale the stars down with the water into your heart. Pause and breathe there. Breathe in and breathe out. Now open the hands to face forward. This is called facing the truth. Both hands facing forward. Think of pulling a prayer shawl over your shoulder. With your left arm, scoop, inhale, over the right shoulder, exhale. Hold that hand there. Other arm, inhale, exhale. So now my wrists are crossed and pause, just breathe your normal breath. Here's where we make this lo lovely mantra for healing the heart. So for your entire life, however much you want to heal, we raise the elbows and three times we make the mantra ka, like it's K-A-H. Raise up, inhale, and bow. Ka. Inhale, elbows up two more times. Inhale. Stand. 
Keep the hands where they are just for a moment. Breathe your normal breath. Keep the wrists together. So my wrists are staying together and my hands are floating forward. And now swirl the hands around each other and put the pinkies and thumbs together. This is the Lotus Flower Mudra. And bring that red lotus to the heart and see your one day old baby self with your adult self now and see yourself at 90, 100, 108, 110, holding the space for this beautiful being with your baby, baby, sweetheart, your original noble heart. Now rub the hands and think of everything that you brought in from heaven and earth, from the, uh, the earth, excuse me, the clouds, and give yourself a, what we call a chi bath, your whole body, everywhere that you need healing. Along your arms, your hands, wherever you need healing. The face is important in Chinese medicine, in Taoism. All the organs connect to the face as well. Okay. So that's the practice. And I feel like... It is so fast for us to do everything, but um, that is called cloud hands and, or it's cloud arms, you'll hear it called sometimes. Um, anybody have questions now? You can, uh, um, Wyatt can, will unmute, raise your hand and Wyatt will unmute whoever has questions. Yeah, I'll just jump back in here really quick. Uh, so there should be a hand raising function somewhere on your screen there. If you raise your hand, it'll jump you to the top of the queue. And I'll just click you and unmute you and you should be able to talk, no problem. Okay, thanks, Wyatt. Anyone have a question? Thought? Or, uh, or the other option is if you wanted to put it into the chat, write it into the chat. I can ask yeah. it aloud for you if you do not want to be on camera. That's, that's true. No questions. <laughs> wow. How did, how was, how was it? Did everyone, anyone have any feedback? Thumbs up or down? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hi, Jeff. Yeah, I was working. I definitely joined in and I yeah. loved it. So thank you very much. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Wyatt. So um, I will just say briefly then uh, that this, we will do a full weekend in October, the middle of October, uh, as we, we were going to do online. But as you can probably tell, doing Qigong online, it's fine. I do teach classes online if anybody, any of you want to connect with me for my online classes. But really to be outdoors is the best way to practice it because it is very much, Qigong is very much about connecting with nature spirits, which is why as an Irish woman, that's why I was, I was raised with the the this connection to the to the nature spirits and that's why i love qigong the other beautiful thing that i didn't have time uh to tell you about is there's a rainbow meditation and um that we can't go through now but there's a beautiful visual visual visualization excuse me of seeing yourself as a rainbow, uh, that the, the, the bones are the crystal that reflect the rain, all the colors of the rainbow. And you know what's so beautiful about that to me 
aside from everybody loves rainbows. But rainbows have invisible colors that are invisible to the human eye. And those invisible colors are also what we connect with in the meditation. So that there's a part of ourselves that we can't even see, but meditating on our invisible color helps us to manifest ourselves in this larger, big rainbow self. Um, so the, there's so many very sweet and beautiful practices in Qigong. It's definitely not a strenuous, powerful practice like a, um, you know, a Shtanga yoga or something like that. But it's a great compliment if you, if you do something like that, or if you're a bodybuilder, uh, it's an amazing complementary practice to connect with the spirits of nature because we are nature. We're made, we have the same DNA as many plants and animals. So when people say that humans don't spend enough time in nature, yes, that's true. But what's more important is to remember that we don't remember that we are nature. We are the water, we are the trees. If you love the birds, you are the bird medicine. You are the lion, the tiger, the hummingbird. You are these creatures, you are this beauty. And so Qigong is all about inviting us to remember that and not to worry too much about our problems because the problems go away when we remember these essential truths. That's it. <laughs> Nadia, if you have time, there was uh, two quick questions in the yeah. chat I just noticed. Oh, uh, okay. One is, can Qigong heal tummy issues? Qigong, I mean, no, we never say that we can de absolutely heal something, but um, the stomach in Qigong is where we hold worry. And uh, the, the color that you visualize for the stomach is yellow. So like sunflower yellow, the color of sunflowers. Um, as you probably know, the, the, the stomach is the second brain although every organ is part of the, is the brain, including the skin. But the, you know when you're worried about something or you're nervous, I know when I am, I feel it in my stomach. Or if I feel something's going to happen, whether it's good or bad, I sense it in my stomach, right? So probably most people have that sense. So Qigong invites us to really... Um, look at what we're worried about to help heal the stomach. Um, and if you have a nervous stomach, uh, which probably many of us do at the moment, having a more bland diet is kind of, is a helpful thing to do, to have, not to eat too many spicy foods, don't drink too much coffee. There's no absolute nose in Taoist medicine but everything in moderation, and that will help your stomach. One more thing I will say, don't eat raw food. Don't, don't eat too many salads if you're, I know that's hard to hear because I love salad, but you use a lot of chi to, um, to digest salad. So try to eat uh, cooked vegetables if you have a tricky stomach. Thank you. And what was the other question? And then the other question, which I can touch on a little bit as well, is uh, will there be continued online practice? So I will definitely supply your web page link in the chat below. You just have to copy and paste it to get to the page. Um, but Nadia, if you wanted to talk more about the availability of online practice. Yes, uh, I teach. Um, what do I have three, at least three classes a week now. Uh, I have a Sunday at five, Wednesday morning at 10. And I teach 
through integral yoga on Thursday nights, uh, 5.30 p.m. And I also do private uh, work with people too. So yes, uh, that's, that's what's happening now. I may be adding more classes as time goes on too. But the classes work pretty well. And if you're able to go outside with your computer, you can, when the weather warms up, we can practice outside. So that would be fun. This archive video was brought to you in part through the generous support of the Menla Tibet House U.S. membership community and viewers like you. To learn more about the benefits of membership, visit tibethouse.us.